It was a few days before Ayumi would be released from the hospital. The setting was a dark, palatial chamber. Truly palatial, what? At that. With various paintings and tapestries lining the walls and ornate, vividly... I'm gonna drink more. <sighs> Along with a variety of human and animal-shaped objects placed here and there. In short, these were surroundings rife with a sinister and supernatural mystique. Such was the nature of Martuba's tomb, the secret organization of black magic practitioners to which I belonged. And into these solemn yet stern environs echoed a low, deep female voice. There was a slow, heavy cadence to her voice and a degree of archaism to her speech that perfectly conveyed both authority and experience. This was not something to be questioned. Surrounding me in the sacred space were numerous shadowy figures each wearing a black robe. We looked an awful lot like the pop culture perception of devil worshippers. Oh. The weight of this news was evident by the sudden emotional reactions of those around me. I too was wearing the black robe the bits of pale skin peeking through would have made it easy to pick me out of the lineup. There was a palpable sense of excitement throughout the chamber. That's that's the black robe you're talking about? You know, if you wore that black robe out into the public, I would just assume it's like a, a coat or something to keep you warm. Honestly, with that black robe on, you look more like a maid. Which is fine by me. You know, you're pretty cute as it is. Guys, please. A cult maid. <laughs> I had no qualms about talking back to our high and mighty leader, but some fights you just can't win. There was no getting out of this one, so I figured I'd just suck it up. I found myself in a local park that night. From atop the jungle gym, I contemplated my situation. 
教団の継承権を盾に脅されたらもう行くしかないじゃんあーだる天神症とかあーだるしかもアホのあずさの回収とかどんだけよ I laid myself back onto the steel bars of the jungle gym and gazed up at the sky. <sighs> the stars were particularly bright that night. <laughs> I could almost make out Naho's wry smile in the sky above, as if she somehow become a constellation after her passing. <laughs> I felt alone, unchallenged. And then it, even the Naho constellation died on me, sliced through by the tail of a shooting star in the dark of night. Unfortunately, I was alone no longer. A voice rang out from below. It was. go figure. Misuto. Yeah. When I turned to look, I saw him standing at the bottom of the jungle gym, waving. <laughs> That's not waving. I said nothing in response. Instead, brandishing my scythe and leaping from my perch in one swift motion, hoping to catch him off guard and lop off his damned head. He was obviously ready for me, however, casually stopping my advance with a 500 yen umbrella. That's not possible. <laughs> it's 500 yen. That's like cheap, man. That's less than five dollars. That's like saying you, you stopped a kitchen knife with a plastic spork. It's not even a plastic fork. It's a spork. The scythe and the plastic umbrella frames scraped against one another with an ear-splitting shing. I had every intention of killing him right there and then, and I made no effort to hide it. Misuto, however, was just smiling back at me, though he had a look in his eyes as well that slightly belied his outwardly nonchalant regard for this battle. His black people shone red in the dim light. <laughs> Finally, we each pushed hard enough that our weapons clashed and afflicted one another, putting some slight distance between us. <laughs> With a flick of the wrist, I shrank my scythe back into a portable form and sheathed it. Then crossed my arms and smiled. Ah, ああ。Ah, so that's the plan. Okay, I get it now. その <laughs> Misuto had his arms crossed as well. He was about as reluctant as a truce as they come. あの本があんたの手に入ることはないから、チビパーカー。He turned to walk away, 
but not before chucking a knife in my general direction. Really? It grazed my cheek before embedding itself in a park. <laughs> in the park. In the bark of a tree behind me. Though I made absolutely no attempt to dodge it. Nor did I allow my expression to change even marginally. Because <laughs> that's just anime. I smiled wildly, drunk my own insane machinations. The pieces were all falling into place. Wow. Lying on my back in the bathing area, of course, right? <laughs> I thoroughly sized up the Ever After stones I'd stolen. Uh... All the while, a maid was scrubbing me down to get rid of dead skin cells so I could keep looking on pure and lovely. The maid just flashed me a smile. <laughs> 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 Just a smile, huh? <laughs> oh boy, why? <laughs> why did I even call these extra chapters? What are they, really? This is, this is why I need to drink at night, you see? It's stuff like this. I hope you're drinking with me. The vehement scrubbing was making a... <laughs> was making my body vibrate quite a bit. And between that and my monologuing, I wound up biting my tongue. Immediately, I shot to my feet. Sure <laughs> Sure enough, when the maid ran her fingers over my body, the resistance they found created a sound not unlike that of a freshly cleaned plate. <laughs> Did they really need that scene? Let's be honest here, you could have skipped from the park directly to this and it would have been okay. I fell back onto my king-size canopy bed, sprawling out as much as I possibly could. And I also, <laughs> I also folded over myself the million dollar bills that I had slowly tucked under the pillows. On the floor nearby was a, <laughs> a uh, golden plated mechanical butler named Waldo. Ojo-sama. While he was speaking to me, he also had a monocle, and he was sipping from very, <laughs> very rich and expensive tea that he could only get from East Asia. I turned my head and looked down at the suitcase. I slowly peeled myself off the bed to begin the arduous task of packing for my trip to Heavenly Host. Opened and ready for me, the suitcase contained a number of essentials that Waldo had pre-packed on my behalf, including a red outfit. With his reassurance, he told me that wearing red and white was the same thing as being in stealth. There was a canteen, some store-bought sweet beans, a black robe, some candles, Matches, a knife, and a few other assorted survival items. Also, pack her makeup too. Hi. That's it? Okay, I'm fine with that.